good morning from Paris. The foodie capital, isn't it? <laughs> I'm so excited in this video to take you around to all of the meals that I eat on this trip from the first croissant that we're headed to now to the final steak frites, we hope. <laughs> Let's get eaten. I arrived to Paris in the evening with just enough time to head for a beer at a craft beer bar right next to Gare de Lyon. After sampling their pale ales, I headed to a nearby bistro to start my trip off right. I had one of their locally brewed beers, a bowl of French onion soup, which of course is just onion soup here, as well as a perfectly juicy confit duck with crispy potatoes. It was the best start to the trip. The next morning I was up bright and early and in search of a place where I could find a strong coffee and a buttery croissant. I love that even in the winter time you can sit outside. I've got a noisette, I've got a croissant and a pan au chocolat and it cost four, just over four euros, four euros and ten cents, which seems very reasonable. Mm. That's not a lot. Mm. So buttery. It's so good. Cheers. Okay, I'm not going to eat them both fully now, but I have to taste the final shot. Right? It's huge. Pastries are very affordable, I feel like. And so delicious. Everyone was very nice in here. I tried my best French. And she didn't laugh. Mm. Just the perfect amount of chocolate. It's dark. It's flaky all over my jacket. So good. Mm. Okay, maybe I'll eat all of this one and save the croissant. I spent a little bit of time busying myself in Paris before I was hungry enough for another meal. I had a specific place in mind that was only about a 10 minute walk from the Louvre, located just around the corner from Place Vendôme. Le Petit Vendôme is petite indeed, with only a handful of tables inside and just enough space for me to grab a stool at the bar. So the main reason to go to that restaurant, besides it being a great price in a really central neighborhood, is for the cured meats and the cheeses there. Uh, if you sit at the bar or you get your sandwich to take away, it's cheaper. Uh, if you want to sit down, first of all, if you want to sit down, especially on like a Saturday or Sunday, you need to make a reservation. They speak English, uh, so you can call and make a reservation if you want to sit at a table. But I just propped up at the bar and had a sandwich and exceptional. Some people were getting like charcuterie boards with all the different meats and cheeses on it. Again, you can sit at the bar for a little bit cheaper, but oh, what a place. Highly, highly recommend. If you want to self-cater or are looking for more budget-friendly places to eat, then I highly recommend coming to Le Marais neighborhood and seeking out this market. There's fresh produce alongside food stalls selling prepared sandwiches, burgers, and piping hot bowls of soup. That night, I met up with a friend who lives in Paris, and we went to a very cool food and beer hall, which was packed with locals, enjoying everything from craft beer to natural wines, paired with food from around the world. I couldn't look past the Napoli-style pizza, cooked by a team of Italians. Just had a delicious coffee, but now I'm off to get a pastry because how else do you start your day in France? And I've also found that places that do good pastries don't do great coffee, and places that do great coffee don't do great pastries, so it's a sacrifice. And this bakery that I've chosen that's around the corner here in Montmartre has a reputation for having the best baguettes in Paris. Okay, I take it back. 
I just had a delicious noisette from there. So hopefully that doesn't mean that the pastries aren't any good. <laughs> Let's try the bread first. I got a baguette, the traditional baguette. Crusty on the outside, fluffy on the inside. Mmm, mmm. Does taste really good. Mm. Even on its own. That's delicious. I also got a pan de chocolate, so we'll sample that now. Look how flaky that looks. If I have the option between a croissant and a pan au chocolat, it's always going to be the chocolate. I mean, it's the same pastry, but this one has chocolate. <laughs> it's so flaky. The chocolate's so good. Oh my god. I'm going to eat this whole thing. <laughs> it's so good. Wow. For lunch, I wanted to have something that I haven't had before, a galette. They look like crepes, but are different than the sweet chocolate-filled ones that you may be more familiar with. These are buckwheat galettes, and they are filled with savory ingredients. I had mine with cheese, chorizo, and egg. I've got one last meal in Paris, and I'm going somewhere that's famously affordable, and is supposed to have really good steak frites, so let's go. This restaurant opened in the late 19th century and was a place where both workers and soldiers came to have their lunches. They prided themselves on being affordable, and they continue to be one of the best value meals in the city. I had the steak with fries and a pepper gravy, and it was tastier than I thought a 13 euro steak would be. If only the gravy had been just a little bit thicker. I hope you enjoyed eating around Paris with me. It's easy to find some affordable spots to eat around Paris, as well as some great food that doesn't totally break the bank. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports my channel. I hope you enjoyed this whole France series. I will link to the whole France playlist here so that you can catch up with all of the videos that you may have missed from this amazing trip around one of my favorite countries in Europe. Until next time, thanks as always for watching. Bye.